All right, class, so here is the practice problems that we're doing in class today. And these are really neutralization um, type problems where we're writing a net ionic equation. And so I'm gonna run through sort of the, the two different types of problems we have here. Um, and, and yeah, let's, let's get started. So the first thing that I'm gonna be doing here, of course, is highlighting the relevant information here. Hydrochloric acid is gonna be reacted with barium hydroxide. I know that hydrochloric acid is a strong acid. It's on our list of strong acids. And you know we're gonna be using that fairly often, so it'd be a good idea to get comfortable with that and just sort of know hydrochloric acid, HCl, strong acid. Barium hydroxide, this is a strong base. And um, you know if you're unsure about barium hydroxide, I think barium we should know is a plus two ion when it's formed you know, in an ionic compound. Hydroxide is OH minus. Again, that's a polyatomic ion. We should be becoming more and more familiar with that. If we go to our solubility rules that we talked about previously, I can see that hydroxides are typically insoluble, but compounds containing alkali metal ions, so group one uh, metal ions, and the barium two plus ion, those are gonna be soluble. So that tells us that that barium hydroxide will completely dissociate. It will be a strong base. Okay. So if we wanted to write the net ionic equation, the first thing that we're really gonna to need to do is to write out a balanced molecular equation. So I'm gonna start by writing HCl aqueous, representing my hydrochloric acid, plus barium hydroxide aqueous. And again, I know both of those are aqueous simply because strong acid, strong base. My solubility rules tell me that barium hydroxide is, is gonna dissolve completely anyhow. Now for the products, this is a neutralization reaction. We need to start recognizing this is an acid. It helps that it says acid right there, right? But that barium hydroxide is a base. Anytime I see that hydroxide, I wanna be thinking base. And I know that I'm gonna form water as one of the products. If it's a neutralization reaction, if I react an acid and a base, we're gonna form water. There's just no, you know, no ifs, ands, or buts about it. That's what's gonna happen. And then in terms of figuring out what's, what else is gonna happen, I think there's a little confusion here. And, and we're trying to sort of do too many things at once. What we wanna say is we wanna say, well, what's left over? I've got a hydrogen here, I've got OH here. That's how I'm gonna form the water. And then I've got barium and I've got chlorine. And it's not balanced out yet and that's okay. We're gonna balance it next. But first I need to predict what the products are gonna be um, and write those down. So I know it's gonna be barium Cl2. So BaCl2, I've chosen Cl2 simply because chlorine is gonna be the chloride ion, minus one charge, barium's got a two plus charge. I need to balance it out. That's gonna be a soluble compound, it'll be aqueous. Um, you know, if I look at my list, chlorine, halogens, those are gonna be soluble, so this will be aqueous. Now, step two, I'm gonna balance this chemical equation. So when I balance the chemical equation, the way I would do this, I would look at the hydrogens first and say, well, I have hydrogen here, I've got hydrogen here, I've got hydrogen here. It seems a little too complicated. I'm just gonna skip hydrogen first. I'm gonna go to chlorine, one chlorine here, two chlorines here, I'm gonna to need to put a two here. Now I'm gonna to go to barium, one barium here, one barium here. Let's do oxygen next, I've got two oxygens here, only one oxygen here, so we'll put a two in there. Now, since everything else is balanced, now I'll look at my hydrogen, and hopefully it'll already be balanced out. I've got two hydrogens plus two hydrogens is four, and I've got four hydrogens on this side, so this is now a balanced chemical equation. So step one, predict the products, and then step two, balance the equation. And I really wanna stress this, step two worrying about balancing the equation because I saw a lot of people today trying to do all of this at once. You know, it, it's gonna be too much, you're gonna get confused, just do one thing at a time um, and, and let's do it this way. So this is our molecular equation. And now we can write out the ionic equation. So my ionic equation, I'm gonna write out all of these different ions. So HCl, I know that that's a strong acid, therefore it will completely dissociate. So I'll get two H pluses, since I've got two HCl's, plus two Cl minus, plus barium two plus, plus two of these OH minuses, all right, so it's OH2, so two of those OH minuses, that's all gonna turn into two H2O liquid. So H2O, it's a liquid, it's, it's not gonna ionize. 
Um, so this will just sort of bring this down. We're not gonna you know, turn it into any ions. Plus barium two plus aqueous plus two Cl minus. So again, even though it's Cl2 here, that's gonna dissociate into ions. I'm gonna get two Cl minus ions and that will also be aqueous. Now for my net ionic, that's gonna be where I cancel out the spectator ions. So I see chlorines on both sides. I see barium on both sides. And that's all my spectator ions. So these are spectator ions. They're just watching the reaction occur. So for my net ionic equation, we're gonna end up with two H plus plus two OH minus reacts to form two H2O liquid. Now, a lot of times what we're gonna see is people simplify this even further. So since we've got two, two, two as our coefficients, we can really rewrite this as one, one, one. Um, I'm okay with us leaving it this way. I think it, it makes a lot of sense. It, it comes straight from our molecular equation. Um, so if you left it like this, I think that that's, that's a-okay. I'm okay with that. All right, let's do the next one. And the next one, I'm, got, I'm using hydrofluoric acid with sodium hydroxide. And again, I'm looking for that net ionic equation. So I know hydrofluoric acid is HF. And I'm gonna write aqueous because we're gonna be you know, doing this in, in water, solution chemistry, plus NaOH aqueous. Right away, I've got an acid, I've got a strong base. I recognize sodium hydroxide as a strong base. So I know I'm gonna form water, right? I'm gonna form water right away. It's my neutralization product. And then I'm gonna form sodium fluoride. So I'm sort of just taking what's left over and saying, well, I'm gonna form sodium fluoride. That will be aqueous. Anything that is dissolved and has sodium in it, will, anything that has sodium in it will dissolve, right? It's our first solubility rule. And this is my molecular equation. If I wanna write my ionic equation, now here's where it gets a little confusing with HF. HF is a weak acid. Since HF is a weak acid, it will not ionize. It will not break into H plus and F minus really that much. So it, it will a tiny, tiny bit, but mostly it's just gonna be HF in solution. So we're gonna leave it like this. Then we'll write plus Na plus, which is aqueous, plus OH minus, which is aqueous, reacts to form water. Again, we're gonna leave the water as water. It's again, not gonna ionize, plus Na plus aqueous, plus F minus aqueous. For our net ionic, again, we're going to cancel out the spectator ions. So the only spectator ions in this case are sodium. And then my net ionic equation should be HF aqueous plus OH minus reacts to form water, always going to be our product of a neutralization reaction, acid-base reaction, plus F minus aqueous. And that's it. All right, let me know if you have any questions and... Thanks.